This week I'm showing you my Allure a day in real time. No fast forward. Hello lovely butterfly, welcome back, it's France. This is my layer one of the A Layer A Day Challenge week 45. That was the one about bubbles, because there's no angry way to say bubbles. And I thought that for this week it would be interesting to show you how my hands move in real life. Because you are so used to see it all speed up to 400% that you might tend to forget that I'm actually human and that my hands move this slow when they're not um, enhanced by computerized stuff. So I have five minutes for each and every layer. Sometimes I do cheat a little bit, but five-ish minutes and I will get my spread done within that time. So first layer, I just started with some water, then I'm spraying on some Lindy's Gangs, mixing some brown colors because I want some grounding tones. Now, if you would like to know which color it is that I'm using exactly, they're all listed in the description of this video. I'm using some more water to blend everything nicely and to have it go wherever it is it needs to go, except for the middle and the spine of my journal. <laughs> That's where I'm lifting it up. Other than that, I'm using water to blend it and to get that dreamy effect. Now, usually I tell you not to use your heat gun for the Allure A Day Challenge because we have better things to do than to dry stuff, but I'm only two minutes in, so I still have some time over for my five minutes, and I do want to be able to flip my journal to pick up all that yummy color that I still have on my table. So I'm going in with my heat gun, just very quickly heat setting what it is I already have going on. Picking up my journal, I realized that I really like that effect and that I still have some of that yummy ink on my table. So I'm just going to repeat the process and I still have two minutes left. So, hey, I can, so I will. <laughs> And I still have plenty of time left over to clean up my table and then I leave my journal on the side to dry it by itself. For my next layer, I want to repeat that picking up the ink thing, but this time with turquoise um, Lindy's gang spray ink. So I'm just applying it on my craft sheet and then picking it up again. That layer took me literally two minutes, cleaning my table included, but I left it aside to dry by itself so that I could do something else in between. 
Coming back to it for my third layer, I'm using my new Alpha Zeta stencil and it took me a moment to decide which medium I wanted to use. I was having doubts between light molding paste or a gesso. It took me 10 seconds to decide, which is a lot 10 seconds when you only have five minutes to do your layer. But in the end, I decided to go with gesso because I still wanted to keep it like flat so that I could go in with some more afterwards. I grabbed a spongy tool and then just went over the stencil using the gesso. And this is why I like to have the large and the small version of the same stencil because I wanted to continue this design going upwards but not at the same size. So I grabbed the small Alfred Zeta stencil, very quickly heat set it the first layer of gesso so that it wouldn't stick to my stencil and then continued applying gesso over the small Alfred Zeta stencil. So far for each and every layer, I have remained under five minutes a day. But don't worry, I'll catch up later. Um, for the next layer, I'm going in with the circumambulate stencil and I'm mixing up and that is why I didn't use the light molding paste for the previous layer because I wanted to use it for this layer. I'm mixing up some light molding paste with some color to apply that directly over the stencil so that I already have a colorized finish when it's dry. Now when doing this, I have to be careful not to put too much paint because otherwise my molding paste will become too liquid and then I will have stenciling accidents and then I won't like it anymore and I don't want that. So I'm just applying a tiny bit of color and this color being so pigmented and as I do have just a tiny bit of molding paste, it is way than enough colorized for what it is I want to do. And now I can just apply this over my stencil, but first I need to protect the previous layer so that I don't get molding paste everywhere.
When this was done, I realized that I'd still had time over for my five minutes. So I decided to leave it aside to dry and then came back to it with some more Lindy's gang, this time with a black one, just to add a tiny bit of drama on the edge of my spread. I am, however, being very careful with the amount of liquid and water that I'm using. My base color is Lindy's and if I add too much water to it, I'll move everything around and I don't want that. I want that yummy brown to stay yummy. I don't want to dilute it or anything. And when that was done, I still decided that my five minutes were not gone and that I could still add some more. So I went back in with some gesso um, and my palette knife to apply it with the flat side of my palette knife on the molding paste so that I would have a clear surface, well, a lighter in color surface for what I had in mind later on. And that is where my layer felt as completely done. So I could clean my table and leave my journal aside to dry by itself. Coming back for layer five, I went back in with some Lindy's Gang. This is my favorite color, red hot poker orange. It's that rusty, yummy color in the Lindy's Gang. So I'm taking out, well, I'm trying to scoop out some on my a craft sheet would have been so much easier <laughs> doing it with a paintbrush but hey sometimes I like it to make it difficult on myself and then using my palette knife I'm dabbing it on the gesso that I have on top of the molding paste and now you understand why I needed that white layer to break the color of the brown so that this color would even be visible on the molding paste if I had done it directly on the brown it would hardly show up
And because I like that color so much and because I still had some left on my table, I decided to add it as splatters on my spread. Again, this felt not as enough for a layer, so I wanted to add some more, so I went in with a fine pen. And I doodled around the gesso from the Alpha Zeta stencil, just to make it stand out a little bit and to give it a bit more of a grungy edge. This is the kind of layer where I can get carried away and forget about my five minutes because it is so relaxing. I can keep on going and going and just enjoy the moment. In the end, my previous layer turned out to be a seven minutes layer, but moving on. I took out one of the stamps from my Map of the World stamp set and some Oxide Distress ink just to stamp it alongside the right side of my spread so that I would have something going on over there. Bring it in to balance with the left side.
This is my tiniest stamp ever. It is a tiny little circle from my Natural Beauty stamp set. And because this is my bubble spread, I'm stamping this all over again and again using archival ink. Now, you know that I cannot just stamp a circle and then leave it like that. I mean, it's, it's, I have to, I just have to. I'm going in with my white Posca pen to add some light at the top of the circle. And then of course I will add some shading at the bottom of the circle. I don't care how small they are. I, 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 I just have to, I just have to give them light and shadow each and every time again and again this is the kind of layer that i can get completely carried away with And to add shading to the circles, I used my beloved charcoal pencil because this one is water soluble. And I really, really like, I really like this pencil. There's no other reason than that I really like this pencil. So that is what I used to add the shading. And then of course, because I have the Posca pen, because I have this pencil, I can go in with some water and then blend everything. And that is where I get lost in time. So instead of a five minute layer, I end up with like a 10 minutes layer, which is not the end of the world. But in all fairness, as I say, the a layer a day challenge point is five minutes a day. But hey, if you have the time, by all means, indulge. And that is exactly what I'm doing here.
And then because I have all the doodling on the left side, I need to add some doodling to my circles as well. Otherwise they like completely lost on the spread. So I'm going around them with the same pen that I used for the doodling on the left. Okay, time to move on to the next layer. Here comes layer seven. And here are the layer a day challenge stickers. I decided that this one worked pretty well with the background that I had going on. So, well, that one was going on my spread on the left side again. Apparently for this spread, everything is happening on the left. And then as I couldn't rip it the way that I wanted because I didn't have enough um, Leftover on the edge, well, I decided to just peel it back off and to distress it in another way. And one of those ways is, of course, one of my number stamps. And now you can see just how slow I am to actually position the thing on my stamping block so that it's aligned, so that it's straight, so that I can use it easily. That is how slow I am in real life. I hope this, this doesn't come as too much of a shock for you. So just using some archival ink and then stamping it on my little sticker because, well, I love my numbers. And now this one can go back on the spread. And what is cool about these stickers is that you actually have words that match the Alayer A Day challenge. So this one was the bubbles um, challenge. So I decided to use one of the bubble words. Easy peasy. There you go. Except when you try to peel <laughs> leftover piece of sticker from your table. Yeah, sometimes it's very hard to live with myself because I cannot stand those little pieces of thingies on my table it has to be clean and 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 when there's too much around me i get nervous and, and <laughs> my patrons they know all about this because when we're doing the lives uh, there's a lot of cleaning involved now this little round thingy that i picked up is actually something that i saved from a tag that i um, made a long time ago that i didn't end up using i just Put on some color on there and the ink accidentally puddled into a little heart. So of course I had to punch that out and that little heart would go on this spread. That is what I had decided.
And the good thing about the earlier day challenge stickers is that you can make them work with your background. So I am going in with Lindy's Gang, the same color, the same blue that I used to add the splatters on the spread. And this time I'm using it with a paintbrush, a tiny bit of water, just to give my word sticker the same color as I have going on on the spread. This thing is a baby wipe that I used literally years ago to clean up my table after using that same kind of color. And I decided that it would work perfectly well with this spread. I needed something to make the left side pop. It was like all brown and getting a bit dull and it needed something a little extra. And that is what I decided to use this for. So I'm cutting it to the size that I wanted to have. I'm cutting it however so that I can distress it a bit and then and then you will see what happens in a moment. I knew that I wanted to use my sewing machine to hold that in place. So that's exactly what I did. So again, this layer was a bit more than five minutes, but I thought it was my last and final layer and I wanted to finish the spread in a nice way that would work for me. So I took my time and added whatever it is I felt like adding.
when I was done, I thought that this was my spread, that it was done. But I decided to add one extra little thing and an eighth layer. And that would only take me like a minute and a half. So I indulged again. And that is just some distress ink that I will then push into the paper with some water so that it blends nicely with the rest. So that my right side has some kind of a border just like the left side does. And that's it. That is my in real life five-ish minutes a day, a layer a day spread. So I hope it has inspired you. It has made you realize that I don't always move this fast, that I'm that I am actually pretty slow when I journal. Well, I think so of myself. So like I said, I hope it inspires you to join us for the five minutes a layer a day challenge so that you too can get some daily journaling incorporated into your life. That's it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you liked today's video. I hope you will subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button, but also the little bell so that you receive notifications of new videos. I will see you on Saturday for the new A Layer A Day live challenge prompt. Now, if you would like to see more of me in real life, <laughs> you can join my Patreon page as we have live hangouts where I actually journal where you can actually journal together with me and where we can chat in real time as well. The link to that is in the description of this video, as is the list of each and every product that I use today. If you're one of my patrons and you're watching this, thank you so, so, so much for being the amazing butterfly patron that you are. I'll see you back here next time. Meanwhile, don't forget to put down a layer a day butterfly kisses.